So, um, so we can hear you fine, said Dimitri. All right, excellent. All right, so uh, what I'll do is I'll get started here in a second. I'll do a real quick introduction. Um, any questions along the way, you know, to stop me, um, you know, do the chat thing, raise your hand. My wonderful assistant and beautiful wife, Deborah, is going to handle, you know, kind of routing stuff over to me in terms of like stopping and asking questions. Um, but I'm Joe. I'm the owner of 718 Cyclery. Uh, we're a one person bike shop here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, it's freezing outside. I hope where you are, it's not so cold. Um, pretty cold here. So what we're going to do tonight is pretty quickly talk about wrapping bars. Um, traditionally or historically for me, you know, I've owned a bike shop for about 12 years. I always had great mechanics um, and they would wrap the bars and I wasn't really involved in wrapping bars so much. But as the business changed and as it became a one person shop, there were a lot of things that I had to now take over and do. One of which was wrapping bars. So I used to be really fearful of it. And now I actually look forward to that because it's usually at the end of the project. It's kind of like that last final piece, um, uh, you know, the last final detail um, of a project. And it means you're just about done. Um, what I've been taught over the years about bar taping is um, it's incredibly important functionally, but also visually more so. People notice bad bar taping and I notice it too. I notice it when bikes come in. I don't say anything. I don't say, oh my God, that's terrible because who am I to judge? But I've been, I've been told that people walk into bike shops and judge shops by how well the bars are taped. Um, and I've seen that. I've seen Yelp reviews that I've, in the past that I've talked about. Oh, those guys, you know, really know how to wrap their bar tape. It means they're really have attention to detail. And I've heard that too about mechanics, that it kind of is one of the windows into their work ethic is how they kind of deal with wrapping bars and how seriously they take it. Um, so um, a lot of times when people come in the shop, and buy bar tape, someone's coming in to buy bar tape, I'll ask them really casually, like, hey, do you wrap a lot of bars? You know, because I like to assume that people you know, know what they're doing or, you know, just want a question. And if they say no, um, you know, I'll kind of lead them or let them know some of the bar tapes that are used, that are easy to use. There's a lot that are easier than others. I'm gonna go through some of the different bar tapes and what's easier to use and what's the best to start with. Um, but I also tell folks when they come in, I kind of try to encourage them because it's something that you can perfect the first time. Like you can actually be a master the first time you do it. If, if you get lucky and if you're good at it and all these things, it's not like, you know, you're a sculptor and it takes like 35 years to, you know, to master sculpting. You can actually do this pretty quick. And I also tell people that it's one of those things that if you mess it up, you just kind of start over. It's not like you're going to blow up your house or like flood your basement or shock yourself. It's just tape and you just kind of undo it and keep going with it. So I definitely encourage folks to come in. When they come in, I encourage them to kind of um, wrap the bar, you know, understand that they can do this themselves. Um, the video that I love to watch, and I watch it every two or three months because I just love it, and I love Calvin, is uh, the Park Tools video. Park Tools makes a video about how to wrap bar tape. And there are some things that I've taken from that. Um, not that I shouldn't take everything because those guys are the masters, but in the work that I do um, and the influences that I've had, there's definitely some great tips in there that I've used and I'll talk to you about as I wrap these bars. Um, the biggest thing I've taken from them and this, them being part tools is kind of the way that they kind of stop along the way. It's not like you wrap bars all the way and I've done this in the past where you wrap bars and then you go back and you realize there's like a, a mistake at the beginning and you have to kind of start over again. That really sucks. So a lot of their methodology that I've taken is more about timing and process. And, and for, for me and the work that I do, we do a lot of custom builds. I say we a lot. I do a lot of custom builds here. And what I need when I'm wrapping bar tape is I need um, repeatable um, high quality results, right? That's what I need every time it has to look the same, every time I need the same results. So that's what I was always striving for. And it's taken a little while, and I've worked with some of the great mechanics I used to work with, people like Tijan, Alfred, Andrew, Chambo, Aaron. I, I was just around so many great mechanics, so I've kind of leaned on them as I've gotten more and more into bar taping in terms of tips and tricks. Um, so um, I'm going to just launch into different kinds of bar tape, then we're going to launch into wrapping one of these sides of the bars. So I'm going to start with the hardest and then get to the easiest, because... We have some new people, so this is how, this is my technical director is telling me, um, if you want to ask a question, hit the chat to everybody. Don't just chat to me only because I, I have no ability to answer it and I'm too far away and I can't see um, the screen way over there. Um, all right, so 
what we're going to do is I'm going to talk to you about different bar tapes. And, and again, people do come in and they go right for the Brooks leather bar tape. And I'm always like, hey, hey whoa, have you done this before? Um, not that if they answer no, I haven't, I'd say, well, you can't use that bar tape. I'll just say it's a real challenge and just realize it might be frustrating and it's expensive bar tape. But anyway, I'll start with the most, in my opinion, and these are, I'll say this real quick. Um, I'm not the be all and end all. I'm not the super expert. I'm not the guy that has the snarky video about how to wrap a bar tape, you know, all these things. I'm just showing you my method. I'm sharing with you a, a method that works for me and trying to demystify it and show you that it is easy to learn. It's easy to master. Like most things in the bike world, it's, it's, it's a learnable skill is what I like to call it. It's a learnable skill and you can learn this. You can do this too. Um, so the hardest bar tape, in my opinion, to kind of deal with is leather. This is from Brooks. This stuff is 75 bucks. Um, it's hard because it's thick. It's hard because it's kind of directional um, in that as you're wrapping it, it really, really, um, because a lot of times when you're wrapping bars, you're going on curved and double curved surfaces. So you need a real flexible kind of material. And this is very inflexible and hard to use. Um, it looks great when it's done. Um, I've done a bunch of this this spring and summer and I've gotten better at it. Um, not my favorite, but it looks great. It looks great. Leather bar tape. Uh, next, in terms of hard, in my opinion, is cloth tape. And we have a lot of cloth tape in the shop, and it, it displays well. There's all kinds of colors, and everyone goes for it. It's like, ooh, what's that? Cloth tape. Very retro. I get it. The problem is that it is very hard to work with, um, only because I think the adhesive on the back um, doesn't lend itself to kind of like removing it and putting it back on. Um, it also gives you a bar in the end when it's wrapped that is very um, uh, non-cushioned. Right? When you're wrapping with cork and, and you're riding, there's a cushion to the material that you're using. With this stuff, there's no cushion. And certainly it looks great, but it is a bone shaker when you're riding. So I tell folks that if you're gonna wrap with cloth, either put like gel inserts below it, which I've seen people do. I've seen people even wrap bars with cork tape and then wrap this over it. Or you may have to wear gloves that have padding, right? So cloth tape, it looks great, kind of hard to use. Uh, the next one, and uh, we do a lot with the Rundle. They make some great, great bar tape. This is the commercial side of it, right? Um, this is kind of a silicon vinyl um, patterned kind of thing. I'll put it up to the screen now. It looks very, very cool. It's just a little hard to work with, um, or harder to work with because it is directional. It is kind of a, um, you know, kind of a vinyl type product. And, and again, as you're kind of doing these twists and turns, you kind of need a material that's kind of a, non-directional i guess is the best way to put it which is kind of what i'm getting at here so this stuff is great um a little hard to work with the next easiest or the second easiest in my opinion is kind of a rubber product this is uh, again from arundel uh feels great it goes on really well nice a nice stretch to it um not incredibly expensive um a lot of folks that have negative reactions to cork in that you know how it dries up or how it gets all ratty this stuff's kind of nice it's, it's definitely synthetic um I mean, it's not synthetic, it's rubber, but it has a really nice feel to it and it goes on really well. So the last piece I'll get to, and this is what I'm gonna use right now, is cork tape. Um, the cork tape I like to use is either from Arundel or Salsa. Salsa makes great, great cork tape. Um, they're just out of stock right now. So I try to load up in the shop with both of those because of all the projects we do, it's my go-to tape. Um, about 20 bucks, um, and I think it goes on great. And again, when people come in that are beginners, I really push them towards this product or products like this because it's very easy to work with. It's very forgiving. Um, so what we'll do is we'll open up this package. We'll take a look at what's inside and I'll describe kind of the roadmap for getting this wrapped. And I'll talk about the tools that I lay out too. I always do this. So one roll, second roll, there's two bar ends that usually comes, uh, you know, and the questions I always get are people don't realize that the bar ends actually come within the bar tape. A lot of folks ask for them in addition to the bar tape, but it always comes with it. The other question is, is one roll enough for one side of the bars? Yes. Um, usually it'll come with two rolls, meaning that the two rolls are going to do the whole bar. Also in this box are some finishing tape right in the garbage, right in the garbage. We don't ever use this stuff. Um, we have a question. What's the question? Watch, okay. but I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. um, I've never wrapped with leather tape and I'm nervous. I'm excited to hear any tips, thanks. Okay, um, did you hear the first part of what I described about leather being really hard to do? 
Um, with leather, I'll, I'll, I, I digress, but I'll, I'll mention leather really quick. You just have to take it really slow and have just lots of, lots of firm pressure all the way around, and you really have to take your time. When we do it with cork, I'll kind of show you what that means in terms of really making sure every twist and turn is kind of meaningful, and it sounds kind of dopey to say that. I'm oh, sorry, I missed the whole beginning. Oh, no, well, no, this no. is recorded, so. No, I meant uh, he had a lot more. Um, Okay, this is my technical director in my ear, uh, letting me know. So we'll talk about leather at the end if there is a question. And I can also, if you email me, I can also get some questions out to you. Um, so yeah, with leather, it is a challenge. Um, and you have to, I mean, this bar, so we'll talk about this bar, for instance. This bar is a pretty simple bar that kind of comes down and bends. You know, there are some crazy bars that have rises that get bigger and smaller, that have double curves, that have secondary bumps that kind of flare. This is a really simple bar, so that's the, the reason I picked this. But, you know, I've done leather on um, a Surly truck stop. If anyone knows that particular drop bar, that's a, that's a drop bar that has a rise to it. So you're kind of twisting and turning all around, and it took a while to kind of get that going. But, again, you, you're just needing to pull that leather really, really firm and really make sure every twist is meaningful. And I'll show you what I mean when I get to that. All right, so... Again, finishing tape right in the garbage because we use other better finishing tape than the tape that comes with it. Almost guaranteed every time the tape that comes within um, bar tape really is terrible. Um, and a lot of times it has logos on it and stuff. And I just use really, really good um, electric tape that I'll show you. So when I get ready to wrap bars, I kind of clear the deck here, I clear the, my work surface here, and I get out five tools. And I always lay them out. It is a pair of scissors. And this is, um, I mean, this is, Titanium, and these are just scissors that, they're, they're no special than any other scissor. They're not like super barber shears, but they're just scissors that all this does is it cuts bar tape. I don't use these scissors for anything else. I don't use it for you know, cutting shoelaces or any of the other crazy crap that you do in a bike shop. These scissors stay off to the side. Again, these aren't incredibly expensive that I know of, but they're just kind of like not abused in terms of the way the blade is used. Scissors, number one. Um, number two is the bar tape, obviously. that's the second thing of the five things, scissors, bar tape. Third is a Sharpie, and you use this to kind of, uh, at, the end of at the end of the run, you're gonna use this to kind of make a mark so you can do your final cut. And, and this is the one that I've, I've learned to get all these tools out because invariably I'm over at our stand, wrapping, wrapping, and then oh, I need, a, I need a Sharpie, and you're kind of reaching like all the way across and trying to hold the bar at the same time. So I get everything laid out, Sharpie. That's number three. Number four is my tape. Um, I use um, really nice, as nice as I can get, Super 33. Um, not an incredibly expensive, but a really, really good electric tape. And this is the tape that I use to finish on the outside and also finish on one of the inside runs. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. And then um, call it electric tape because I have tons of this crap. I don't know why or how. And actually, you can see all of it up here. I've inherited, I've accumulated tons and tons of this crap. So I use this um, internally to wrap um, if, if there's any cables and things. And I'll do a, a practice run of that to show you what I mean, just to kind of get rid of it because no one's ever gonna see it. Um, and I just need to get rid of this tape. So that's what I'll do. So those are the five things I lay out. And I'm very, this isn't my work stand right here. My work stand's very close. So I have everything kind of laid out. Um, you know, I do, oh yeah, there's one more thing. That's four things. <laughs> this is the fifth thing, this pin spanner. This is a tool from a, a, an era long ago that not many people know what it's for. And it's been, um, and I don't use it for what it's for because I just don't see that kind of situation anymore. But what it's really, really good for is actually kind of stopping your work as you're going when the phone rings or someone comes and you can't use the pump outside. And I need to stop what I'm doing and kind of, um, it's almost like a big paper clip that kind of stops your progress and keeps it there. I learned this from Arthur Pomeroy, who was a former employee. I don't know where he is these days, but this is the one thing I learned. Well, I learned a few things from him. This is a really important thing that I've learned from him. And whenever I do bar taping on Instagram or whatever, everyone always asks, like, well, what is that for? What are you using that for? And I'll show you. Um, this is like an inside, inside trick that I've learned. Those are the five things. So um, we're only going to wrap one side of the bar. We're not going to do the second side. I'm going to be able to turn this forward so you can kind of see. Isn't that kind of neat? I spent all afternoon kind of getting this display set. Um, you know, what's in place right now is a drop lever, which is here, which you'll, you'll invariably have some form of brake lever on your bike. 
Well, it's not shown are the cables, right? So coming out of this lever is probably one or two cables that need to um, need to kind of be secured. And I probably should have added those, but what I'll do is I'll simulate that. So when you cable up a bike, you know, you're, you're cabling up the, the brake levers, you're cabling up the shifters. Those cables come out of this controller and work their way into a bike. And cabling is a whole nother topic. <clears throat> so the first thing that I'll do, um, when I finish a bike, um, when I finish building a project bike, what I'll do is I will get the, the cables taped down, which is, and this is what I use this interior tape for. So I'm going to simulate the ability, the idea that we have cables here. What I'll do is I'll take a little bit, and you never want to rip it with your hands. You always, just, always use scissors, right? You never want to like try to tear this with your hand. Scissors. So I'm imagining that I have cables coming around here, which I don't, but I'm going to wrap these cables, imaginary cables, once, right in the corner. The corner's a real, a real tricky place. So when the cables are coming out, I want to get them sutured into the corner. Um, the next thing I'll do is I'll do a second one, and I'll do this in the middle of the run, which is right around here. And again, I'm, I'm doing this to kind of secure imaginary cables to the bike. So that's the second one. Now the third one, I'll use black, right? Because the third one where I do the last piece is where the tape is gonna end when I do the bar taping. And if I use a color and you can kind of see it from the side, there's a chance you might see that you have yellow on the side of the bar tape. So what I do is the last one I always do is I always use black and I always use um, the black that I'm, that I'm gonna use um, for my finishing tape. So again, this is still the substrate here. I'm still taping down imaginary brake cables and housing. Snip. And here what I'm gonna do is I'm determining now where the tape is gonna end. Um, and it depends on the bar, it depends on like, you know, the graphics or what you wanna show. I like to usually, if there's no graphics or anything, I like to usually end, you know, about three quarters of an inch right leaving that open right just just for the heck of it i mean um there are reasons to kind of um so again i'm taping this these imaginary cables down you know if, if there were graphics or if like sometimes uh, some handlebars have a different material where it's like more rough here for your hands to be or there's a gloss or sometimes there's a reason to stop it and a lot of times there's not a reason where you're going to stop it so all i do is i do this I'll then do the same thing on the other side. I'll measure that distance because I just kind of eyeballed the first one. But the second one, I want to measure off the first. So both the tapes are stopping at the same point. So at this point, once I'm taped, um, and I'm in theory, I have the levers kind of set where they're both going to be, I'll take the bike for its test drive because um, I don't want to wrap the bars, take the bike for a test ride, and realize like one of the levers is crooked or the cable snapped or there's a problem. Um, bar taping should be the last thing that you do when you're building up a project. So I'll build the project, I'll get it to this point, I'll get all the cables sutured down and connected so I can actually ride the thing, take it out for a spin. <clears throat> I'll then bring it back, you know, go through all the gears and all the things you do on a test ride on a frame up build, bring the bike back in and then do the bar taping and then go out and take pictures of it. <clears throat> so that's the last thing I do because I want to make sure that everything is working. It's the last thing that I touch on the bike. All the cables have been trimmed, everything like that. So, so here we go. So we're going to start. And the way that, um, that I like to think about this is I think about it, and there's like five little chapters on each side of the bar. And I'll show you what I mean. The five little like pieces. And I do this because I get interrupted a lot. As a one-person shop, phone rings, pizza guy shows up for somebody else, not me. Um, all kinds of things happen. So I need to stop and start a lot. So the way I kind of picture the five kind of pieces of this, the first one is kind of dealing with getting the, um, kind of getting the tape started, but also getting the end cap kind of set. That's the first piece. The second piece is kind of the back stretch, right? You're kind of just wrapping along, wrapping along, you know, for three or four wraps, it's kind of cool. Nothing going on, it's relatively flat. Then you're gonna start curving a little bit and that's where it gets a little, um, you have to start really thinking about the turns that you're doing. So that's the second part. The, uh, the intermission or the third part is getting around this lever, right? And there's a lot of controversy and a lot of people that tell you it's supposed to be this way or that way. I'll show you the way I do it. It's the way that Tijan does it. So that's all I have to say. Tijan does it that way. So that's the way I do it. And that's end of story for me. So that's, that's the third piece. The fourth piece is kind of coming across the top. Again, um, you're, you're kind of working this double curve or the single curve. 
And then you're in the home stretch. Boom, 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 boom. You're getting really, really close. And the fifth and final piece, and the most important piece, is how it's finished. It's so important. Um, every bike that I see, every bike that rolls in, I always glance there first just to see. Um, and if someone rolls a bike in and it's really beautifully done, I'll say, I'll, you know, hey, wow, did you do that? That's really good. Um, if it's really bad, I won't say anything just because you know, I'm not into shaming people on their bikes. No big deal. It's not the end of the world. Um, but um, it's this one little piece here is like kind of everything on a bike in a lot of ways. It's what's what people see. So let's get started. We're going to get started on the, uh, the first part here. And the way that um, um, some tape have, has adhesive on the back, some tape has adhesive with paper, and some tape doesn't have any adhesive. So this has adhesive with paper, meaning that, um, peel this off, it's slightly annoying, but what it does is it keeps the, uh, the um, adhesive kind of fresh, I guess, you know. So what I'll usually do is, I won't take all this off when I start, because when I start, you're gonna have tape that's kind of hitting the ground because you have a lot of tape. And if you take this adhesive off, you're gonna pick up, or this paper off, you're gonna pick up all the crap on the floor, dust and, and kind of stuff. So I, I like to, although this gets in the way, I like to keep this on as much as I can. So I'm also gonna take a look at what's going on with these end caps, right? There's different kinds of end caps. There's some that screw in, there's some that are like um, uh, tension-based. Um, these uh, are just basic end caps, but the, the insidious part of it is there's a logo on it, right? Ooh which means that now I have to make sure that this thing is like that when I put it in, as opposed to like a silver or a black one where I can just jam it in and not worry too much about, you know, what it looks like. So now I have to worry about what this looks like. Not a big deal. So to start, what I'll do is um, I'll go about halfway over the edge and um, my hands are big stupid fingers in the way, but I'll start about halfway over the edge. And when you're starting directionally, you wanna go um, outward. You're starting at the end and you're going outward. And what this does by, by going outward like this, going from inside to outside, you know, as the idea is that people that are riding and climbing hills are, are kind of doing this. So you kind of want to wrap the bar tape in a direction where when you're doing this, you're kind of tightening it. You know, just the human nature of doing this when you're riding, you want to wrap it in a way that when you're doing that, you're tightening the tape and not loosening the tape. And again, um, not a lot of controversy there. And, and the way I always think about it when I start, I think about um, the two ends and I just do this, just in my mind, like out. So I'm starting out, 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 out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right at the top, just so I have a reference point. I'm gonna go around, one full rotation. And then I'm gonna, well, see it always slips a little. So you're gonna wanna make it nice and solid because you're only dealing with half of the half of the adhesive on the end there. So um, we'll get to what's going on as I go here, but what I'm doing is I'm just kind of, I'm eyeballing this and I'm kind of like coming down the middle of the adhesive as I kind of do my next turn. Nice and solid and nice and slow, right? This isn't a race and I'll do about three of these and I'll stop. Right, and I'll get my little thing and just stop it. Again, what this comes from, this comes from the park tool methodology where they, you know, want you to stop and kind of do the little detail work and then move on to the next piece, as opposed to if I got all the way to the end and realized that I didn't leave enough tape overhang here to make it work, I have to do the whole thing over again, which really sucks. Now, I will also say this, that I, I think I have a broken thumb. <laughs> My doctor thinks I might have a broken thumb. It makes it a little harder to do what I'm, what I'm gonna be doing, so just bear with me. Um, I hit it with a hammer in the shop. All right, so um, all I'm doing here is I have overlap and it's about half overlap. I'm gonna try to tuck this in as best I can. And I'm doing this kind of backwards here. So it's hard to, hard to kind of backwards with half a thumb. So I'm just gonna try. And I'm, of course you wanna get this thing upright. Yes, yeah, so this is with this thumb situation, it's a little bit of a challenge. So let me do it the way, the way I would, I've been cheating and doing it and I'll show you how I do it. So I'm just pushing in. I know you can't see anything. I'm pushing in on all four sides. I am plunging in my little Arundel thing. And there it is. Ta-da! I'm gonna spin it around, show you what it looks like. Keep 
There it is. All right, so there it is, right? And what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for all the tape kind of being um, sucked in. I don't want little pieces of tape coming out. I don't want little ends coming out. Again, it's very noticeable. Customers, you know, spending $2,500 on the bike, I mean, the least you can do is get that correct, right? All right, so I've gotten step one out of the way. It looks decent. I'm going to start my run, what I call the back stretch. And the, the deal is here is that you just want to make every turn kind of purposeful. And I, and I know that sounds kind of really new agey and kind of dopey, but every, every, you know, this isn't a race and I'm not trying to be the fastest person ever. You know, I'm trying to be thoughtful with every turn and really understanding that, you know, if I just keep turning this thing and spinning this thing, I'm going to have a problem here, right? I have to kind of adjust my methods here because I have a curve that's about to happen and I want these things to, you know, to look really, really well when it's straight. Certainly it's very easy to make this thing look really well, but when it starts to turn, you now have to kind of like use your brain and kind of um, just use some proportionality to get it to work really well. So all I'm doing is I'm just really eyeballing this as I'm doing it and I'm, I'm feeling all the way around and I'm pulling it nice and tight. Um, Park Tool has a great method at the beginning of his bar wrapping where what he does is he takes a little, a little sample of tape and rips it just because uh, you can have extra tape, you know, you know, there's going to be a little extra piece of the tape. What he does is he takes it and rips it so he can understand how hard it is to rip the tape. Now, when you use the same tape all the time, certainly you get an understanding of how hard can I pull before it rips, right? Nothing worse than ripping it because there's no fix in it. You got to redo it. Um, but, you know, I may have a batch of tape that was made four years ago that's sitting in my basement that maybe dried out a little bit. So um, the first, what's that? I have a question. Are you wrapping from Dimitri? Are you attaching the glue strip to the prior wrap layer? Half, or, right down the middle. Or laying it on the bar surface? So what I'm doing is I'm splitting the difference, Dimitri. I'm actually, uh, hard to see, but I'm, I'm using that as my guide and actually going right down the middle. So half of my adhesive is going on the previous run and half bit's going on the, the actual bar. And I, I know people do it a lot of different ways. That's just the way that I kind of like. Cool, thanks. All right. So now what's going to start to happen, I look at these segments. I'm an architect by trade and I see these segments and my, my, my eye can see that that's pretty well, you know, stationed out. But now what's going to happen is I'm going to start having to, as I turn, things are going to start to get a little weird, right? Because, um, and, and the worst thing to do is like one of these, right? Where you kind of like, you kind of get a little piece that's showing, right? So you want to really start to be really careful and, and really thoughtful around these turns. Um, certainly we're going to inspect it um, here really shortly, but um, you really want to always be touching and feeling this thing to make sure that it's the worst when you're finished and you see a little piece of handlebar exposed. God damn it. All right. So. I'm taking off more of the paper because it's getting in my way. So I've gotten to the I've gotten to the mountaintop here, right? I've gotten to the underside of the of the bar of the the lever, the drop lever, and this is um, a huge bone of contention. I won't say controversy because it's just fucking bar tape, uh, bar tape. Whoops. Um, but <clears throat> this whole next run is uh, different. People do it differently. Now, what I think about uh, sometimes bar tape will come with a little. A piece of a little tape segment that you're going to put behind here to cover uh, the the um, the bracket. <clears throat> but there's a technique called the figure eight, which some people like and some people don't. But I think the, what the figure eight does for me is it because what I want to do is I want to like loop de loop de loop de do this, and I want to come out of this in a way where I'm going to be able to finish this in the right direction, right? So here's what I do, and I'll do it. I'll do it a couple times. I do the, I use the figure eight. I, there it is. I set it over, over. I'm just going to do this once and I'm going to take it off and do it again. Okay. So uh, again, I'll, I'll stop and do it again. What I, what I want is I want when I'm coming for the front, I want to be going from front to back, front to back, front to back, because I want to counteract the person that's doing this when they're riding. Now I've seen a lot of videos where they go, and I used to go back to front, back to front, back to front for whatever reason. But again, um, the more videos I saw by the people that I kind of like really respected their work, I saw that it was going from front to back. 
Now, again, not the worst thing in the world if you're doing it the other way, because I've seen a lot of videos of people that know what they're talking about that are doing it from back to front. Um, I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to say that's stupid and wrong. I'm here to say I do it from front to back because Calvin Jones from Park Tool does it that way, and so does TJ. And that's all I got to know. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go backwards again and show you kind of this technique because it took me a little while to kind of come up with a way that I can memorize this whole little figure eight thing. And again, you might not want to do the figure eight. You might want to use the other technique. And if you watch the Park Tool video, I really recommend it because he shows like the three or four ways to kind of deal with this. And he kind of, um, kind of bemoans the figure eight a little bit, which is like, you know, again, that's Calvin Jones from Park Tools. He knows what he's doing. Um, <clears throat> but I find for me, it gives me really great results around the, around the hoods. It gives me um, a repeatable result that I can get every time. And I'm not dealing with a secondary, you know, a secondary segment of tape that I'm trying to lie under. So what I do is as I'm coming around, as soon as I hit, just about underneath the hood, I'll then, the way I think about it is I go, oh, backwards here. Oh, I'm just doing this again because I get turned around. Yeah, there it is. What, is it, what I do is I come up over the, over the top, Come around the other way. So now I'm reversing the front. See, I messed that up already because I'm trying to do this with my fucked up thumb. Oh, messed up thumb. Around the front. And now I am off to the races on the back, right? And what I'm doing, and I'll do a couple more, I'll do it a couple more times and I'll show you kind of what I'm looking for as I get out of this turn here because what, they, what Park Tools wants you to do is stop. And I agree with that. So I'm gonna stop it. Because basically you wanna, basically at this point, what I wanna do is again, I've, I've come, I'll do, one, I'll do it one more time. But the results that I'm looking for are, I want this in the back to be nice and smooth. I don't want there to be any kind of seams. I don't want there to be any looseness. And when I pull the hoods down, because this is the time when I pull the hoods down right now, I don't wanna see any, any handlebars, right? So this is what I want to see. I, this is something that I would be like, okay, good. I'm going to keep going. So let me do it one more time. And that's all I'm looking for. And again, what, by doing that and by inspecting it now, as opposed to inspecting it after I've done this whole bar tape thing at the end, it um, just allows you to kind of correct it. And it's got to be right, right? It's got to be um, people's hands are here a lot in a lot of different directions. So let me do it one more time. And this is just the way that I do it. This isn't like the, the right way to do it. This is the way that I get results that I like doing it. And I've probably wrapped 100 bars this year, 300 bars. Um, again, it doesn't make me a pro. It just makes me a person looking for results that I can get that are repeatable. Um, all right, so here we are. And I'm coming around the, coming around the bend. Oop, I think I just broke my stupid, uh, let me fix this real quick. I made this little stand here. It looks like it just broke off a little bit. I'm twisting this thing so much, so much pressure on this. There we go. So I'm coming around the bend. My last time I'm gonna pass the hood. I wanna go over the top and down. Coming back to reverse. Now I'm in the other direction on the hood. And you just gotta do this a couple times to get like a nice little, little muscle memory of how this works. And just fix real quick. So over the top, around the front. So I'm going reversing my reversing course. And again, I'm really, really inspecting this because this is really critical, a really critical part of it. Probably the second most important, second to the bar, the end ending tape. And again, now I have a, now and and you you kind of come out of this. And all of a sudden you have a curve to deal with, right? You're dealing with this upper curve. No big deal. So what I'll do is I'll do this and I'll stop. I wanna inspect, I wanna run my hands all over this thing because I wanna find edges. I wanna find if there's um, seams and things that I, that I may have missed. You know, the, the downside to doing this method is it takes a little more tape because you're kind of reversing yourself and 
you might run out of tape if you have a really wide handlebar, and, and very rarely does that happen. Also, you know, what Calvin Jones will say is it kind of like makes this a little more bulbous and a little, you, it's kind of, I don't really think that it is, but his, his argument is that it's not as clean as it could be. Um, and I get that. But what this does is this allows me to finish um, the hood area and kind of come out of that in the direction I want to be. And a lot of times when I was first doing this, I would kind of work around it and do it. And I would come out like in the wrong direction and be going from back to front. So it's just kind of visualizing kind of where you want to end and working backwards. All right. So now I'm in the home stretch, right? I've, I've passed uh, number three here. Oh, what I want to do is I want to put the hoods down. You always want to put the hoods down now to test it, to, to test coverage. You don't want to wait till the end, right? I don't want there to be like a lip down here. If, if the tape's all messed up, I want this to, I don't want to see any handlebar at all. Um, and I want this to look nice and clean, right? Because that's a picture from the side. I'm going to see this thing from the side and I want this to look the way it needs to look from the side. All right, so now we're gonna do the, the last piece and we're gonna get to the end. And the end is where the, um, separates the people that do this for a living versus the people that don't do this for a living and don't pay much attention to it. But you can do this. Like you don't have to do this for a living to get really good results. So I'm working my way around this turn, right? And again, I want to um, make sure that all of my turns are thoughtful and they're all meaningful and I'm looking at these things and I'm getting a nice good tension. So now I'm going to start moving this way, right? And I have to do it on an angle and I'm just overlapping, trying to overlap. A lot of times tape has, there's a logo on it or an indentation. So I'm just trying to match that as I work my way around, right? It's just because the customer is going to be looking at this for hundreds of miles, if not thousands of miles, they're looking down at this. And if this is all messed up and, and not good, it doesn't, it just doesn't send the right message, right? So this is the really important part. I want to make sure this looks really, really good. So I'm coming around and it's hard to see on, t on, uh, on, on the TV, but um, the end of this tape ends right here, right? There's a, a tape line that has to end. So what I'm going to do is, and this is the trick, you're going to go wrap past it, right? As if the tape wasn't even there. I'm gonna do that, right? So now, I'm, of course, I'm like running out of room here. I'm gonna be at the end of uh, the end of the line here soon. So what the technique here? It's not getting right. Is and this is where the sharpie comes in. So if you look, I'm kind of coming diagonally past where my my tape is. My tape is gonna be in a, a vertical line. The tape that's underneath that black tape that I did. So what I want to do is I want to draw a line in my, with my Sharpie where that tape would end, right? Where, if, if I were to lay this down underneath here, where does that tape end? And this requires a little bit of, a, of deduction, right? I'm saying like, hey, it's going to be right about there. And I want to draw a straight line, straight up and down like this. Really going to be really hard to see on TV. I might just do it with a um, paint marker. Hold on. Sometimes I was... Doing this in the past. Let's see here. None of these work. I'll find one that works. I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise. I know I'm showing my back to you. Rule number one of television. Don't turn your back. All right, so I'm going to use a, a white. I would never use this because I don't want any kind of stuff to show up, but this will help a lot. So I'm going to draw a line like this. So hard to see. But there's a line right there, and it's a line that is uh, perpendicular to the ground, I guess. And it represents where I'm going to cut the tape because I want the tape to end perfectly, right? So that's all you're doing is you're kind of overlapping where the tape was, and you're kind of – I'm going to draw a nice, better line here if I can. Right. Come on. Suck. Not sure you can see it. You can kind of see it, right? Yeah, there it is. So that's where I'm going to cut, and that's where I'm going to end this thing. So what will happen right now is the phone will ring, and I'll let this go, and it all just <laughs> unwraps itself. Always happens. So what I do is I get my little green thing. Theoretically, this should stay pretty well wrapped. I mean, that's 
you know, decent adhesive under there. But if you were using tape that didn't have adhesive or had different kinds of adhesive, this would all like unwrap like a spring. So what I do is I just put this guy here, answer the phone call that asks what her hours are, come back and like, oh, I gotta finish this. So what I'll do is, you know, I can unwrap this a few, uh, up until this point, I can work with it. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors, whose only job is to cut electrical tape and bar tape, and I'm just gonna cut right there. And again, I usually do, I usually do this in black Sharpie, only because, you know, I, and if I'm using black tape, you know, you don't see it. So the fact that we're using white, you know, hopefully we won't, you know, we won't see it. So now what's gonna happen is, as I wrap this around, this is the really cool part. If you notice, it just ends perfectly, right? Hard to see, kind of can see the shadow right there. So all I'm doing is I'm coming around and I'm working this in a way where that triangle is gonna end right there, right? So that's... It's like it's a little bit towards... What's that? Well, it's towards me. All right. No, <laughs> I'm getting a direction here. What? This way? There you go. Yeah, it's really hard to see. Um, black tape, yeah. It looks good for here. It looks great. Um, but um, let me just see if I can help visualize it just a little bit more. Yeah, understood. Ah, said. Excellent. <laughs> understood. Right? So now I'm done. If I just held it right there, I'd be done. But now I have to tape this thing. And this is where having a broken finger becomes a little challenge, but I've, I figured out a way to kind of deal with this. So what I'm doing now, I can take this off, I don't need it anymore. Now I need to do some of my good electric tape in it. And you notice my finger is still holding this thing down, my broken finger is holding this thing down. What I like to do um, is, when I pick the tape up, or when I put the tape down before I pick it up, I try to put a little edge on it, right? I try to um, lift it up just a little bit so I don't have to go picking at it because trying to pick at this tape, you're gonna mess up the edge, right? And we don't want any of this edge to get messed up. So what I'll do by holding this down, I'll put it on my, I can't put it on my thumb. I put this tape kind of on my finger as if it was like a movie reel or something. I pull it down and I, while I'm still holding that little edge, I push this down really carefully. And what I think about and what I'm thinking about is I want this thing to look like a wetsuit. I don't want any, I don't want any seams whatsoever. I want this thing to look like a wetsuit. So I'm gonna come around and I do this four times. I've seen people do it twice. I've seen people do it three times. Well, I do it four times. Right, and again, I want this to look like a wetsuit is what I'm visualizing. I want this to be perfect. We'll come around and we'll end it on the bottom so I'm cutting, never ever ripping this here because that tape gets all messed up. I'm cutting this at the bottom. Um, my friend Tijan, um, after he cuts that, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll zoom in to do what he actually cuts. He cuts off two little ends, two little 45 degree corners. So the tape has less of a opportunity, not on this, on the actual thing. So I'll do, I'll do that real quick, but I'm not gonna be able to see it. He cuts off two 45 degree corners so the tape has less opportunity to kind of come up on itself, which, you know, I think it's more of a, um, a little more of a, of a, all right. So then I'm done. But what I'll do is I'm, I'm gonna go through this whole thing again, just to really, really make sure that this is like, this is the tape that I want on my $2,500 bike. Like this is the tape that says to me, yeah, this is a good tape job. And I will check it the whole thing the whole way through. Now, um, real minor, there's a, a little minor edge that came through over here. So sometimes what I'll do, if, if when I do this, I see this minor little edge, and I hate to attribute this to my finger, but I wasn't able to pull it really, really perfectly. So I see a little bit of tape coming out. I'll take a utility knife and just kind of go along the edge and just make that really, really, really perfect, right? It's pretty good right now. It's, I, would, I would run it out the door the way it is, but I would probably do a little more on this. Um, I've seen techniques where people will actually kind of cauterize the tape with like a lighter and they'll, 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 they'll have like a wrench or like a, a hex tool that they use and kind of get it red hot and kind of like burn the bottom of it. Um, I've seen that as a technique to kind of um, secure the tape. I don't really do that. Um, 
was thinking about doing next. It kind of looks cool, but I don't do it. Um, someone was also telling me about engine tape, which I just heard yesterday from Tijan. I don't even know what this is, but there's a, apparently there's a tape that doesn't doesn't react to UV um, the way the electrical tape eventually starts to break down and get gummy. So I use the best electrical tape that I can find, but there is um, something out there called engine tape that I've just heard of last night that apparently doesn't doesn't do that. Is someone asking a question? No. no. All right, so that's kind of it. That's what I've got um, for bar tape. Um, I find that <clears throat> doing the right side, or as looking at it, doing the right side for me is easier just because of I'm a right-handed person. And the way that my stand is set up to do the left side, I have to do a little monkey business to get over to do that. But I do it, and I, then I make sure that what I'll then do is once I do both of them, I'll make sure that this, this little segment matches perfectly, right? It's got to be perfect, especially if there's using different color tape or the bars are a different color. This whole scenario here, in conjunction with the cables that are coming out on the front, really, really dresses up the bike the way it needs to get dressed up at the end so it looks, again, like the way it needs to look when it rolls out of here. Um, and again, cabling and housing and all that stuff is a whole different different topic. Um, so with that being said, uh, I will open it up to questions. Questions, right? My director is saying question. Well, you can do it. You can talk. Do people want to talk? Like, how do you do that? People can, can people talk? Themselves. If people, people can unmute themselves? If people have questions and want to unmute themselves, apparently you can do this in Zoom. <laughs> I'm like the only person that hasn't used Zoom in this whole pandemic because I work here. I don't work in an office somewhere. Um, um, okay. Awesome tips. Do you have any? Do you do anything different if you're using bar and shifters? Ah, great question. Paul Gentry. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for the question. That was a great question. Um, it wasn't really a good question. So bar and shifters. Bar and shifters are those little guys that come out right here. Um, and they're usually seen on touring bikes or, you know, older road bikes, but um, definitely um, uh, still seen on modern touring bikes that are made today, right? So with bar and shifters, what I do is, you know, the, basically the, you, you put the bar and shifter in, you start wrapping the tape. Now, Wrapping the tape at the beginning, you're going to have to use electrical tape down here because you can't really overlap the bar tape to get it into the, um, into the bar end with the, the bar and shifter. You just can't. There's no room. So what you'll do is you'll do a, a cut at the bottom, a diagonal cut, and just tape it really nicely. So there's always tape at the starting point. Well, now it's going to have, the one other thing that's weird is that there's a cable that runs under there, right? And eventually the cable has to come out. And I always think it's like one of those, like, colostomy bags it's kind of I hate to say it that way but like it's kind of below the surface and then it kind of this this kind of this kind of uh, <laughs> this cable comes out so all I do is I just do it where once this turn starts going up I want because this cable is going to come out and want to dive down right the cable doesn't want to go up and then go back down so what I do is I, re I kind of like um, let the let the cable out right where it's horizontal where my turn is starting to go up and then what I, what I, and there's really nothing you can do. You, you're not taping that to make sure that no water gets in there. There's really, you know, if you tape it nice and tight, it should be all right. And all I do is on the other side, I make sure I do the damn same thing in terms of the number, you know, the number of times I twist, I want to make sure it matches over there. Um, one other interesting thing is like when you're done taping, right? So I taped one side and where did my little end of piece of tape go that I cut? <laughs> So um, at, the, at the end, when I ended this, right, I, I cut a little piece of tape off. I, I drew that white line. I cut a segment that was like this. Well, in theory, when I do the other side, I should have the same amount cut off, right? And sometimes I'll test it. Like you'll, you can lay it out, you know, on a bench and see what your leftover is from both sides because it should be really, really close, right? Sometimes when I find that it's um, a little bigger than I want it to be, I'll go, I'll look back and like, ah, oh, did I tape it too close here versus there? Sometimes I'll try to convince myself that, oh, maybe they made one longer and one shorter, which is not true. But um, I'll try to figure out why, because it really should be within, you know, half an inch to an inch. The leftover pieces should really match, right? There's no reason those leftover pieces shouldn't match if you're using a very consistent technique. Okay, next. Next question. Is heavy rain bad for most bar tape? Is there a best tape for tape for any rainy weather? Yeah, I think, you know, um, the the thing about cork is that it's a natural product and it's not like 100 percent cork there's cork added to it um and i think that it being a natural product that degrades it probably is the least 
um, least um, durable in terms of weather and rain and stuff, cork can go bad really quick uh, if it's left outside, if it's not wrapped correctly. Um, so if I'm talking about, and then leather, obviously, you're going to have problems with wet weather and leather. Um, I've been using rubber on my bikes, the um, rubber, rubber gecko from Arundel. Um, I think this is a nice middle ground because it, it is kind of multi-directional. It does go on very easy. It is affordable. Um, I like the way it feels, and it also is a little more impervious to the weather, right? So that's a synthetic product that's going to be a little more impervious, where it's cork and, and leather <clears throat> being organic in qualities you know, are going to break down a little more. Um, Wait, next, question. next question. There's a whole, there's this legend of like Eddie Merckx, who's like the, the most famous bike rider, bike racer ever, would get his bars taped like every single day, like pure white every single day, like the mechanics would rewrap his bars because he was so like anal about how it had to like, look and... and Perform. Another question. Any tips for wrapping? Who's, who is it? Oh, it's Dimitri. Dimitri. Yeah. Any tips for wrapping around gel pads on the bar? I ride rough surfaces and appreciate the extra cushion. Yeah, I don't do much with that. I don't. I haven't seen much of that with them. So what Dimitri is asking is that there are inserts that you can actually lay down, very similar to the way that I laid down that initial yellow tape as a substrate. You can lay down um, gel and kind of wrap over it to kind of give you a more squish. Um, so I don't have a lot of experience with that. So, you know, beyond securing it well and taping over it, um, I've also seen people like wrap double bar tape, like they'll wrap a second row over this to give them more comfort. But in terms of the gels, I haven't done much of that. I haven't, uh, I've seen it, I've been around it, but I haven't actually done it. So the technique, I don't, I can't imagine how different the technique would be than what I showed, but um, I don't know. I mean, specifically. All right. Almost an hour, jeez. All right, so this is the, you know, any good TV show has got to have a commercial on it. Um, basically, you know, this is 718 Cyclery, I'm Joe. Um, we're a one person shop, it's like 300 square feet. It's probably smaller than your living room in this bike shop. Um, we're a locally owned independent business, um, not beholden to really much of anything in terms of uh, corporate stuff that, you know, vendors and stuff. Um, we, th we thrive um, on local community and, uh, uh, things like that and you know so what I would ask is just um, if you're getting a chance take a look at our website and our website we have an online store which is great again this isn't about selling you stuff I'm not holding this up and saying buy this it's $29.95 um, but just take a look at our online store it's 718c.shop there's so much good stuff on it we do camping supplies outdoor supplies blah 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 blah. but that's the commercial part of what we're doing here um, what they would want to learn next. yeah so um, you know we're gonna do this every week um, I'm going to try to do this every, uh, every Wednesday at 730, similar kind of hands-on things, similar kind of um, discussions, and uh, you know, try to demystify a lot of this, right? There's, if this is not, what I did here is not in the realm of the gods. It can only be done by, you know, guys with lots of tattoos and beards and stuff. It can really, really be done, uh, much as I like and work with lots of guys with beards and tattoos um, for many, many years in other shops. Um, all right, so with that being said, I want to thank you guys all for the initial Bike Shop Night in America episode. Um, this went great. I have a smile on my face because I had a good time doing this. And um, we'll see you next week, hopefully. Tell your friends and go to our web store. All right, have a good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Oh, um, you can hit end. I'm going to hit end. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just hit end meeting for all. Where? Um, before you can just um, mute your for a second, stop recording, mute yourself.